Welcome to the first floss tube episode of Stitched in Hand. I am Janet. I'm a little bit nervous or feeling awkward about sitting here in my dining room talking to a camera. I did several years ago do a knitting podcast so you would think I'd be used to it but it's been a while and it's feeling very awkward and uncomfortable and I have two teenage boys walking around which makes me feel even more uncomfortable but hopefully it won't be too bad and not too awkward for everyone to watch and hopefully there will be people watching this and I'm really not talking to myself <laughs> in my dining room. Uh, so a little bit about me. So I live in Massachusetts. I live with my husband of 22 years. I still can't believe it has been 22 years. Some days it feels like it has flown by and some days it feels like it's been twice as long and I'm sure anyone who's been married this long understands exactly what I'm talking about. We also have two teenage boys, a 17 year old who is a senior in high school and a 15 year old who is a freshman. And we also have a dog named Lego. He is an Alaskan Klikai and maybe a little later on I can grab him for the camera in case anyone wants to see him. He hates cameras. <laughs> Even having, I take out my phone to take a picture of him and he <laughs> purposely looks away from me. So we'll see if I can wrangle him up later on. Anyways, I guess maybe I should talk a little bit about my crafty endeavors and my creative history. So I, back in 1999, my first craft was quilting and I still love quilting um, so I haven't been sewing too much right now I'm actually just getting over a cold and haven't done anything but binge watch <laughs> floss tube um, over the last few days but um, so my first craft that I've done was quilting I Basically, I'm self-taught, so I was living at New in New Jersey at the time, and I'm originally from Massachusetts, my parents are in Massachusetts, and I was home visiting them for a weekend, and I was watching my mom quilt, and she is, she's such a prolific quilter, so I was asking her all these questions, and she sent me back to New Jersey with a foundation paper piecing pattern and told me to buy myself a cheap sewing machine, which I did from Sears, an $80 Kenmore sewing machine that actually bit the bullet about two years ago. So I certainly, for about 21 years, got my money's worth out of that Kenmore, and I miss it. It was a good little machine. So then, after quilting, once I had kids, um, we moved back up to Massachusetts. I didn't have a designated quilting area or a safe place where I could quilt and have um, babies and toddlers crawling and running around. So I looked for a craft that was more portable, less moving parts. So and by that time, YouTube was finally invented and I picked up knitting and I, I still love knitting. I love knitting uh, sweaters and socks and um, maybe I'll share projects here and there as I work on them. So I've been knitting since about 2008 and then COVID hit and I think we all felt a little bit, um, or at least I felt uninspired, looking for something new. I was working from home. The kids were remote school from home. I'm a customer service rep, so I'm on the phone all day. And then I had the kids at home doing remote learning. It was quite a challenge and a struggle. Um, and I was just looking for something new. So I ended up, I was watching some knitting podcasts and <laughs> In my recommended feed came a floss tube of Elizabeth Ann Canstitch. And 
honestly, I binge watched, I think there were about four episodes at the time out, and I went and I binge watched them all um, before I even cross-stitched. And then I started watching several other floss tubers, and I picked up my first cross-stitch, and I fell in love. Um, I have to say, I don't have very many crafty friends. I have one friend that quilts, but she lives in Atlanta, so many, many miles away in an airplane flight. So I don't have anyone to talk to besides my husband and my children, so I think they'll be glad that I'm actually doing floss tubes, so I don't talk to them about cross stitch and that maybe I can build a community around me that will enjoy talking about cross stitch with me. I don't have any local needle workshops by me. There are two in Massachusetts. Unfortunately, they're both about an hour away in opposite directions. So eventually I'll get there when I visit them, but it, there's no stitching nights or anything like that. So this is going to be my outlet and hopefully you guys enjoy me sharing my cross stitch with you. So I have, let me see, I have one fully finished object, a couple of finished objects and several whips and some plans that I figured I'd share with you guys today. All right, so I'm going to start with my fully finished object. So this is Jack's House by Stacy Nash. I stitched this on um, Patriot's Brew by R&R, &R, 32 count, and I used none of the call for colors. You'll see some things I'll stick with the colors and other things I want to start as quickly as possible that I just dive into stash. <laughs> and get the colors as close as possible. Um, and anything um, that I've deviated from the called for, I'll put in the description box below, especially in case I, I misspeak. But for the floss, I used um, Coloring Cotton Spice Cider. For the white, I used Coloring Cotton Raw. And for the greenish tan, I used Weeks Dye Work Pamlico. Um, I have to glue this. This is coming apart already. My hot glue gun. I was impatient and I didn't wait for it to fully heat up. So I'll have to fix that. And I attach this to a board by Homestead Needleworks. And I feel like it's missing something. So I love the way Priscilla and Java Girl stitches Chrissy, uh, Christy, the way they finish. However, it's just not my style for my home. So I love primitive, I love rustic French country, and my husband loves traditional, which is an odd combination, although I think I've done pretty well at decorating the house to kind of meet all of our um, likes. But I can't decide if I want to add maybe some jute around it just to give it a little extra. What does everybody think? Um, could hot glue gun um, some jute on that? So it might not be fully finished quite yet. I'm going to live with it like this for a little bit and try and decide if it needs more if I like it the way it is. So that is my fully finished object. Now I have two finished objects. One was a day stitch and you're gonna look at the pattern and you're gonna think it's not fully finished. However, I've decided I'm not stitching on it anymore. So this is the one I did. It's the Merry Christmas Deer and this was a freebie by the Little Stitcher. And here it is. So I did not do any of the white. Um, I started doing the white and it just looked sloppy and it didn't matter how much I stitched and restitched. I even put it in a small hoop and tried to stitch it and I couldn't get the stitches to lay flat so I decided to leave out the white. Um, I didn't do, there is this bottom border down here. I'm not doing that. I'm going to, I bought some um, 
red and tan ticking fabric and I'm gonna make this into a pillow so I think I'm going to do the ticking fabric below that um, so I'm just leaving it like that as a pillow and this is stitched on 25 count Lugana that I made a mess tea dyeing but it kind of gives it that rustic primitive look that I like um, I do not have a lot of Christmas stitches so I'm gonna try and do a lot of small stitches um, to make little pillows and things for around the house um, so that's kind of my goal for the next month is to do a lot of um, a lot of these little stitches and I don't so I don't think I said what floss I use so I used Weeks Dye Works brick for this um, and I'm not into for Christmas we do a lot of the um, French country blue um, ticking ribbons and we do mercury silver so I didn't want something super bright red this is going to work out nicely with what we um, how we decorate for Christmas so my next finished object is this is Little House Needleworks this is the peace tree and I stitched this with because like I said we do blue so I stitched it with um, Wavy Navy by Classic Color Work. So this is it here. Um, this stitched up super quickly um, and I love the way it came out. I used 36 count, that's raw, raw linen um, by Zweigart and I'm going to get a silver frame to put this in so it blends nicely with my decor. Um, and then, yep, I just, I love the way this came out. So that is it from my finished objects. So I'm going to share with you my whips. So my first whip is the Bitter Flower Sampler. This is by Birds of a Feather. And I am doing none of the call for colors. I wanted a blue flower a lot. We have a lot of blue in the house. So I have converted everything to blue and then I didn't have any of the call for colors so I just pulled colors I thought would look nice together and here they are. And here is what I have so far on the sampler. So I have two borders done. I got bored and I just really wanted to start on that flower. I am stitching this on um, Zweigart flax um 36 count a one over two i have to say i had a moment of panic this morning as my younger sons were looking at it saying you miss the h in that top border to which i then quickly pulled the pattern and there's no h in it i didn't mess up i don't have to rip out half of the border so glad there is though an H in the side border so not too sure I'm sure it was done for spacing purposes but it gave me a mini heart attack this morning so uh, that is the first one I have been working on second one I actually just started I only had I have one full day of stitching on Saturday I honestly wasn't feeling great the last few days so I haven't done a whole bunch of stitching but I'm glad I got in a full day on Saturday so I feel like I've gotten quite a bit um, for such a new start I got quite a bit done but I am working on the winter is passed by blackbird designs and blue how could I not do this and I am doing all of the call for colors and on the call for fabric too which is picture this plus oaken in 36 count and here is what I have so far so I am more than halfway done that top um border and I am so pleased I wasn't too sure how when I first started stitching it I if I liked the variation of the I think it's Loden yep this is Loden how the variation of that green was looking but I do taking a step back having the flowers done I love the way it goes from that light pastel green almost to that olive color 
so pleased with the way this is coming out and um, yeah, I'm just really in, enjoying it and enjoying the border. I um, think I'll get through the top border and I'll jump down to the letters. I love stitching letters and I know a lot of people say it. It's just super quick and, and fun to do. So that's my second work in progress and my last one. I had so much more done on this this morning um, than I do now. I had to frog quite a bit. I have to say I try and look and say can I live with it? I'm not a perfectionist by any means. I don't mind having mistakes if I can work around them. Unfortunately I was half a stitch off and I just there was couldn't quite figure it out and it was just easier to take my seam ripper and just rip off <laughs> um, what I had messed up on. So what I am working on, this is Heart and Hand um, Doodles Autumn and here is, and I'm doing all the called for floss on that, but here is what I have so far. So I had the leaves of the sunflower done and I no longer do because they were half a um, half a square off. If they were a full square off I might have been able to finagle it but being half a square off really bothers me. So this is being stitched on 27 count Lugana um, by Picture This Plus in the color Ren. This is, I do prefer, so 36 count linen is my favorite to stitch on. However, being 45, I need, I, I feel like my eyes over the past few years have just gotten worse and worse. Um, so I have some heavy duty readers that I use to stitch on the 36 count. This I keep downstairs by my computer and I'll pick up and do a couple stitches here and there throughout the day on it. Um, so this is going to be a very slow stitch, but um, I don't, I can't switch from my computer glasses to my readers very easily. So I do have a small magnifier and good lighting down there, but I find doing a low account uh, linen or Lugana easier to stitch when I'm down there. So this is my downstairs project. So here's what I have, hoping tomorrow I can get some of the leaves back in. And that is it for my works in progress. And then I figured I would share some of my plans um, of what I'm, I'm thinking. One, I'm definitely, well, no, I'm definitely starting two of these. So um, I figured I would share with you um, what I have planning coming up. So the first one, I'm gonna, sorry for the crinkles, I'm gonna realize I should take this out of the bag so you can see it and you won't have all of the light shining here. So the first one I am going to start, so I have a plan for this. So this is a Moonlight by Little Needleworks and I'm going to stitch this on a 25 count um, Lugana Vintage Country Moker um, by Zweigart and I ordered some white silk to stitch it with, um, however I don't think I'm going to get the silk in time. So this project and why I'm doing it on 25 count Lugana after I just said I really prefer things on 36 linen is I am going away um, out of the country for the first time by myself, well with a tour group, but by myself to Sicily um, and I wanted something where I don't need my heavy readers and I can just do my reading glasses or I can do heavy readers without good light um, and be able to see the whole. So this is going to be my um, my Italy <laughs> trip uh, piece that I'm going to work on and I have a pair of socks I'm going to knit on when I'm there as well. So I ordered white silk. I don't think I'm going to get it in in time if I don't all a couple days beforehand just go to my local Michaels and pick up a couple skeins of um, some type of white. Uh, I probably won't do the blanc because it's just too bright but I'll, I'll pick something up if I don't get the silk in time and then I'll just use the silk for another project. 
Uh, so that I'm definitely going to be starting soon. And then the next thing I am going to be starting as soon as, so I just ordered all of the floss for this and I ordered several different linens because I'm not quite sure which linen I want to use, but this is Harriet Elizabeth Co. Um, and this, I was watching, well, I've been watching Carol from Saltbox Stitcher, um, and this is always hanging up behind her, and I am so in love with it, and I've been back watching her episodes, and she finally talked about this one, so I, she did an episode of What's on Her Wall, so as soon as she said it, I went online, and I ordered it. Um, and then I just got it in, so I just ordered all of the floss, and like I said, I'm not quite sure what fabric I'm going to use, but I ordered a couple different ones to see um, what I'm going to use, use it on, put the floss on it, and decide which one's best. And the next one that I'd like to start, but I don't know, I might have to wait until next year, because we don't have a whole lot of Christmas stitches like I said so that's why the moonlight I definitely want to finish for Christmas um and then so this one by Brenda Gervais um joy in good cheers I pulled I had the majority of the call for flosses and then I pulled similar ones um and I do want to get this started I have some linen actually hold on a second i'll be right back all right sorry about that so i recently um like a month ago finished this one this is by brenda gervais this is her be thankful be thankful um and i stitched this on a duxbury by fox and rabbit 36 count and i have some left over enough to be able to stitch this so I have everything all kitted up with what I want to use I just like all of us I want to stitch all the things I just need to find the time to do it or I need to cut back but I'd like to get started on this as well but I got a lot going on right now so it's all kitted and ready whenever I'm ready for it and so in the last thing I'd like to do before Christmas is this little free pattern by Little House Needleworks. And I figure I can quickly just grab some um, floss that I have in stash. And I'm hoping it's not a huge, it's 41 by 47. So I'm thinking I could be able to stitch this up pretty quickly. So um, in add to my Christmas stitches, I have a habit. I'm obsessed with fall. Autumn is my favorite time of year. Everything about it, pumpkins. I adore pumpkins. Um, I have in front of me, I'll just show you. These are cute little crocheted pumpkins. Erica Arnett um, did a tutorial on YouTube. I'll link it below. Um, and I have a bigger one over there. And then I had knitted this one up last year. Um, so. I just, I'm obsessed with the fall and autumn, but I really need to. And it's funny because a lot of people have a lot of Christmas decorations. I don't. <laughs> don't have a lot of Christmas decorations, although my husband and my kids could probably disagree with me. Uh, but I'd like to boost up some of my Christmas stitches and then, um, yeah, and then I always fall back to autumn, but I want to get a couple Christmas stitches done and get that over with, and that's basically it for my stitching today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, and I think before I go, I'm going to quickly grab Lego for anyone who wants to see him. So this is Lego. This is our Alaskan clique guy. He hates cameras as much as he hates being held, um, so I don't know how long this is going to last, but he is... So he's a miniature husky, he's all of 20 pounds, and um, yeah, whoops, and he is done. Okay, so, so that is it. I hope you all have a great few weeks and get a lot of stitching in and just enjoy this beautiful autumn 
weather in season and I will see you next time. <laughs> Bye!